Hi, welcome to our series, How to Pray. I'm Professor Avraham Apatow, and today we're going to speak about geocentrism. In our last discussion, we explored the idea of Jewish cosmology, and I gave an overview of this picture, which is very definitely a geocentric cosmology, a geocentric picture of the world. Now, from a modern perspective, from our view today, most people believe that the sun is the center of the solar system and that the earth revolves around the sun. And the, the great accomplishment that actually brought forth the beginning of the modern era, the scientific era, was this great discovery of Copernicus that the earth was not the center of the universe, but that the earth and all the other planets revolved around the sun. So it may appear kind of absurd to actually seek to return to this ancient picture, a kind of flat earth theory. Well, if you ask the regular person on the street, does the earth revolve around the sun or does the sun revolve around the earth? They would say, of course, that the earth revolves around the sun like all the other planets. It only appears that the sun revolves around the earth. And that was the great revelation of modern science. So why on earth, pardon the pun, why on earth would we want to return to that unscientific and mistaken perspective of previous generations? I think the biggest prejudice we have is that science has to always move forward and that obviously today we know more than people knew in the past. And so when it comes to cosmology, today with all our satellites and advanced telescopes, my goodness, the amazing pictures that we receive from NASA, we have so much more knowledge and information about what the universe is, it seems absolutely absurd to think that the ancient perspective could be more accurate or closer to the truth. Well, I'm not going to really argue about the science of what's true and what's not true, because that's a, always an open discussion. Science is always evolving, and even its perspectives on, on, the, on the cosmos and on the, on the reality of our universe is in constant flux. And just like there was the Aristotelian or Ptolemaic view of the past, and then the Copernican view that most people hold today, um, in the future, there will probably be a different perspective, and in fact, there's already different perspectives. So that's not really the, the main issue. The main issue is, is there a value and relevance for that geocentric perspective today? And I, and I think there's a very strong case that there is. And the most important thing to remember is that we're not talking about science. We're talking about spirituality and how to understand uh, the, our relationship to the creation which was made by God, and that is not a scientific perspective. And as I mentioned in the previous discussion, part of that Jewish perspective is there that God directs the world through spiritual means. He has angels, and we'll discuss in a future presentation what are angels. So there are things in the Jewish cosmology that don't exist in science and have to be accounted for. So if you just have a scientific picture of the world, then where do all the other spiritual forces come? How do they play a role and how do they picture in your very image of the cosmos? They don't. They have no place in your picture. So you have two separate pictures. You have, on the one hand, you have modern science and the scientific textbooks. And on the other hand, you have kind of religious textbooks, and that's kind of what's called the uh, the great compromise, that there's a difference between faith and reason. So you can have your irrational beliefs about spiritual beings that's part of your culture and tradition in one pocket, but you can be more rational and be scientific in the other pocket. Well, that leaves a person in kind of a split personality, and he doesn't really know how to integrate these two worlds, and that's really the the place in which most people live. 
And this creates a lot of limitations for an individual's spiritual life. So one of our main aims in this presentation is how to integrate these two aspects. So today is going to be a really important part of how to do that. The first thing to realize is that it doesn't really matter whether one believes a geocentric view or a um, Copernican view of, of the solar system or the universe, it doesn't really matter. What's relevant is the question, does the geocentric perspective have a value that's necessary in our lives? And I would like to give an analogy. It's a really beautiful analogy. If you're going to go camping and you lose your compass along the way, and you have to go find your way back home, you're going to look, the first thing you're going to look at is where is the sun rising and where is the sun setting? Well, according to Copernicus, the sun doesn't rise, the sun doesn't set. It's always in the same position. But if you're out there in the fields camping, out in the mountains, that's not how you see the world. You see the world that the sun is rising and it's setting, and that's how you determine where east and west is. This is the natural way we experience the world. It's the intelligent way to experience the world. It's an intelligent basis to make decisions from. So in just the same way as if you're going camping, the geocentric perspective is the one you're going to take with you. Well, in the same way, in your spiritual life, the geocentric world view is the one also that you should take with you because that's how God created the world to appear. And that's how he wants you to experience the world. But you may ask, why would he want us to experience the world in a way that's not true, that only appears that way? Well, that's also a very interesting question given contemporary perspectives on science and the physical world. Because Einstein taught us that space and time are relative. Well, in a relative, relativistic universe, where is the center? All relations in space have to be relative to something. Moreover, the universe that the scientists describe is infinite. And in an infinite place, where can, how can you talk about a beginning, middle, and end? There is none. So the whole idea of a center is a very relativistic term. So if, it's a relativist, it's, so if it is a relativistic term, then we can use it in the way that's most practical and valuable to human life. So let's take this issue of science a step further. According to Einstein, it seems it's all relative, and so, okay, we're open and free to choose the perspective that we desire. But there has been a, astonishing revelations in science in recent years that present actual evidence of a reality of a geocentric universe. Not just a geocentric solar system, but a geocentric universe. Now this is just evidence, and that doesn't determine it as a scientific fact. But there's no other evidence of a center of a universe that I know of besides this. And it's caused great headaches and uh, sleepless nights for many scientists because they don't have an away, a way to really account for it. But like I said, I'm not basing this discussion on a scientific argument because I'm not interested in arguing that the geocentric universe is the true scientific reality because I don't think it really matters that much. What matters is that it's the spiritual reality, the spiritual truth that's essential to human life. But this really reveals that it's certainly not absurd. It's not a flat earth theory. It's not absurd to look at the world this way because it's, as I said, the practical way, just like navigation uses it. In Einstein's view, the world's relative, so we have a freedom to do it. And then I'll just add a, a quick uh, description. According to recent studies, as a friend of mine wrote, 
the co in the cosmic background radiation permeating the universe have revealed an axis of symmetry around the entire observable universe. In other words, if you can have a picture of the entire observable universe and you divide it in two halves according to the various radiation that uh, their, their scientists uh, monitor and they divide this into different hot and cold region, regions, it's something way beyond my understanding. But according to their actual scientific experiments and, and data, there's a symmetry between these two basic halves, and that point of symmetry, that central place, is none other than the Earth's equinox plane around the Sun. In other words, that central plane of the Earth is where the two halves of the entire universe meet. Well, that is absolutely astonishing. And the scientists acknowledge it as a, as, a, as, a, as a data, and they have no way to explain it. And so, like I said, it doesn't have to be the absolute truth, but it sure shows us that we're not dealing with an absurd flat earth theory. This is a viable and reasonable way and a useful and meaningful way to look at the universe as we'll continue to explore in our upcoming presentations. Thank you.